Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. Today, I have Jill Vandor, executive matchmaker, dating and relationship coach with 25 years in the dating industry. Jill has made a career out of getting people into serious relationships. She is the go-to for successful single professionals in the greater Boston area as a matchmaker, dating coach, and all-around dating expert. Welcome, Jill, to the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, May. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Yes, yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I know you've been in the dating industry for 25 plus years, so you must have a lot of great dating tips and uh, know-how for the listeners. I just kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit, like we're having coffee, just enjoying some girl chit chat. Um, I just want to kind of talk about, you know, I have a lot of men who come to me who are in their 40s and 50s, and this might be their second time around dating, and um, they might have kids, they don't want more kids, they're kind of ready for the next chapter in their lives. So based on your experience, um, tell me a little bit about what you would do to uh, date coach them to get into their second relationship. Like what are some tidbits you have for them? So, well, the first thing that I would do is this, is that um, I would want to get to know them and do a full interview with them to find out what it is they're looking for, the type of woman they're attracted to, what's worked in their past relationships, what hasn't, really get to know them and make sure that what it is that they're looking for is a great realistic approach to what it is because I want to set them up for success. You know, a lot of um, the gentlemen and ladies for that matter that I work with in that age group, yes, they've been married before, they've been had their kids and unfortunately, you know, for one reason or another, they find themselves single again. And it's a whole new way of dating. They haven't dated in, you know, 20 plus years and they want to get themselves back out there. So I just want to have a good heart to heart interview conversation with them to make sure that their expectations, what they're looking for is realistic. Cause sometimes they don't even, they think they know what they're looking for, but they don't really know. So it's my job to help guide them along the way to set them up. For success. So what if some guy is 55 or 60 and they come to you and they want to date somebody significantly younger. Like, is that doable or what do you advise them if they want to date someone 15, 20 years younger? Well, I think, first of all, it depends on the gentleman, number one, um, how youthful, how mature somebody is. Um, I tell all of my clients the same thing, you know, first and foremost, age is just a number. So sometimes somebody might be you know, think that they want somebody so much significantly younger because they want them to be able to keep up with them is what it is. Um, other times, they, if they want to have children and they hadn't had children, or there's different reasons why people want to date younger or older for that matter. So depending on the person, you know, ideally, I like people to date within 10 years of their age. However, if somebody is very useful. They have significant reasons for wanting that younger person. I'm going to find out how realistic I think it is to fix them up and go from there. So do you, you, know, so do you feel that women should uh, date within 10 years as well? Like they should be open to dating up to 10 years older? I absolutely do. I think yeah. that um, the whole thing is this when it comes to age, that you want to just make sure that you have chemistry and compatibility. So sometimes somebody could be one age and on paper, it all sounds so great, but they're, you know, far, you know, they're not as in great shape and they're younger, or maybe they're more useful and they're older. I tell all of my clients that the more flexible somebody is, the more open-minded somebody is, the more opportunity it will give them and the quicker they will get into a, a relationship. That being said, I want it to be the best match for them, not the best number for them. Right, right. I mean, how do you get around with someone who's an ageist, like a woman or a man? Like if the woman, she's 45 and she's like, oh, I'll date uh, 35 and older, but I will only date up to 50. Like she's only giving you five years older, but 10 years younger. I mean, how do you guide her and how do you coach her with that? 
Well, I tell people as a general rule of thumb, in order for me to be working with them, I like my clients to be, you know, open to dating five years below, five years above. That being said, then I want to get to know them. I want to do an interview with them and I want to find out what it is that is making them an ageist for one reason or another. So from time to time, you know, there might be somebody that I might not take because they're, you know, too rigid in their parameters, or there might be somebody that is very rigid, but I know that it's a very realistic, ex that I can achieve it easily based on who I'm working with and my experience in the past. Right, right. So it's yeah. a little different. Right. Yeah, I try to at least, I tell them, well, if you're open to dating someone 10 years younger, coming to a matchmaker is hard. Like guys aren't coming to me saying, I want to date older women. You know, they're coming to me wanting to date younger women. So if someone is ageist, I feel like their chances are even better online where they can just show their photos and let, you know, the opposite sex decide. So that's always um, challenging. And I agree. The thing is, this is a lot of the people who are, you know, looking for that person who's significantly younger or whatever, they will meet them online. But you want to know the funny thing is, is, you know, more times than not, they end up, I'll, I'll say, you know, I understand you're meeting them online, but we're still talking. You're not meeting that right person. So you have to decide what's the most important thing that you're looking for. And a lot of times the reason they do want younger is because they want to be you know, attracted, they want to feel more youthful and this and that. So I've got to get to know them and make sure that, you know, it's going to be a good fit. And if it's not, then it's not, that's okay. But exactly like you're saying, I'm going to say to them, you know, I want to be able to match you appropriately and get you into a relationship. So let's talk about what it is you're really looking for and go from there. Yeah. I feel like, um, let's say, you know, they got married when they were young, twenties or thirties, and now mm -hmm. they're like in their fifties. So they haven't dated in like 20 years, but in their mind, they still feel like they're maybe in their thirties, but they're still attracted to someone who looks like they're in their thirties. Like they necessarily won't say, oh, I'm attracted to someone who's in their fifties now. So I think that's everybody's problem. We think we're younger than we are, right? Because we just feel right. young and we think that we're still attracted to who we were attracted to many, many years ago. So at least that's kind of how I thought. Like, oh, I God. agree. Yeah. yeah. Like age yeah. is really just a number, but especially if you don't need to have kids anymore and you're not looking to like have to get married again. Like a lot of times people in their second um, relationships, they're not really thinking I have to get married again. They're actually okay living with a long-term partner. So I guess there's different... Um, different things that come up uh, as we age, so. Well, I agree. I think a lot of the clients that I work with who have been married before aren't necessarily looking to get married again. They might end up getting married again, but that's not the end all be all goal for them. I think they're looking for more companionship and somebody to compliment them, not necessarily complete them right. in that respect. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, it, if they're not looking to have kid, children, like you're saying, then, it shouldn't matter on the age front. And, you know, I have a joke that, you know, if I had a quarter for every time I heard how, you know, useful somebody is and how great they look for their age and everything, I would literally be a millionaire right now. I mean, the whole thing is this, you know, the majority of the people that I talk to, they do, they take care of themselves, they're good and everything, but, you know, it's just like they're saying they want younger. It's the same thing on the flip side. So it's my job to kind of have them, see the full picture of it so that and it, you know a lot of people will you know say okay I understand what you're saying and then there's the other people who, who are like no I only want to date that and then that's okay you can continue to do that but through me this is who you're going to meet somebody who you're going to have a good opportunity to get into a relationship with that's you know still going to be attractive and everything else so when uh women come to me and say well I look really young I look 10 years younger, I still look like I'm in my thirties when she's like in her fifties. I yes. always say, if that's the case, you should get recent photos taken of you, post them on your dating app, whatever online service you're using and tell men that these recent, these pictures are recent and let them decide. You don't need to say it on your profile that I look way younger than mm -hmm. I am. Like you should just say these photos are recent 
and just let people decide and for them to say, oh gosh, you look great. Like I hate when women come to me and say, oh, I look way younger than I am. It's like, okay, let me just show the men your photos and let them decide, right? I mean, we all think we look younger than we are, so. Well, and it's only that the thing is, this is that I think that they should, uh, you know, have a friend look at their photos before they put them online anyways, because, you know, a lot of the pictures that these, you know, I have, you know, met with people, worked with people, and they'll, you know, submit me pictures, and I'm like, you're far more attractive than these pictures are even, and, or, you know, they don't look as, you know, recent, and you're going to be dating this person, you're going to be meeting them, so you need to give a realistic expectation of what you're going to look like, or else you're starting at, at a detriment to yourself, so it doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah, I feel like um, 80, 90% of the people who do online dating, they will get way more uh, yeses and more interest in them or more hits or more winks or more messages if they would just update their photos with nice photos, with no sunglasses, no hats, you know, not crazy design on a shirt, you know, just nice neutral colors like blue or black and not like bright red sweatshirts and logos and stuff like that. I just feel like there's so many ways to present yourself better online. And of course, I didn't know any of this until, you know, now, I mean, 13 years ago, I had no idea I was doing online dating. I was doing a really, really poor job. But I feel like what better way to meet somebody than go through a matchmaker who can represent you well or do online dating, but represent yourself well, that way you can get a lot of hits on there. So what are your thoughts? Um, do you well, encourage I think your clients to do online dating the same time they're matchmaking with you or no? I encourage my clients to use every resource possible for themselves, yeah. you know, to meet that right person. I would never want to take anybody out of the game in any way, shape or form. But I do believe, you know, it's twofold. I'm not only matching my clients up with people who I think are going to be great matches for them and that they'll like them and the other will like them. But more importantly, it's kind of like having a friend fix you up with their friend. So they've already been pre-screened. They've already been vetted so that by the time they meet, they're five or 10 steps ahead of the game. Right. That being said, you know, people are going to do online. They're going to have friends fix them up and everything else, which is all fine, well and good. But I'm going to also give great dating advice to help them, you know, when they go on a date, if it's not through me, because even the most attractive, the smartest of the smart, and I think you'll agree with this, they make mistakes and they throw grenades into their dates and they, you know, might say or do something silly that they think is innocent and they wonder why the person is getting ghosted or not getting a second or third date. And they're easy fixes from our perspective because we know the do's and don'ts of dating. Right. No, I agree. I mean, if you have a client who's doing online dating and they take all the date coaching that you've given them and they are successful going online and matchmaking with you, it's still a win for you. It's still your success because you helped them and coached them and guided them. Like that's such a huge bonus of working with a matchmaker, I think, is like, you really find out like what you did wrong on a date, which you normally wouldn't, right? Like you would get ghosted, but now the matchmaker, the middleman is kind of like helping you get some information. Like, why did you get ghosted? What, what happened on the date? Were you rude and you didn't know about it? Or, you know, like all this kind of stuff. Like sometimes I get date feedback from both parties and it's mm -hmm. like, they were on two different dates. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, I thought... I thought this happened, but then you hear another person's version and you're like, oh my gosh, like I could totally see the wires crossing and not connecting. So, yeah. <laughs> I always say there's his side, there's her side, and the truth is somewhere in between there because it is amazing how, you know, the different perspectives. But I think the thing is this, is that you were saying, you know, anybody that you're coaching, fixing up with somebody, you're giving them even if it didn't work out, you're giving them the closure, the peace of mind that they want to have to know, because so often, you know, somebody will go out with somebody and they, and they will like them, whether it's, you know, online or anything else. And then they end up wondering, like, it was such a great date, you know, everything was great. And then they get ghosted and they're like, well, 
what did I do wrong? And then they start changing things that they're doing because this person who's not for them, you know, made them second guess themselves. So here at the very least, if they really did something wrong or anybody, you set them up with, they did something wrong, we're going to know what it is so we can help them. And it's not like major, but you know, you want to make sure people are being on time, being chivalrous, being kind, not bringing up, you know, past relationships on dates, not talking about, you know, politics or something on a date so that they're setting themselves up for success. Do you tell your clients not to talk about politics, sex, and religion on a date? Like what other topics are like taboo that they shouldn't talk about on a date? My topics that are taboo are anything to do with a past relationship. Do okay. not talk about um, whatsoever. Nothing good is going to come out of it for right. sure. You know, um, so don't talk about any anything to do with dating at all because you don't want to sit there talking about your bad dates on it. You know, in life, I know that's a commonality, but at the um, I also say don't talk about politics because you you know you might win the battle but not the war. So it's not gonna it's a a first date. The best advice I give somebody is to see, do I like this person enough to go on a second date with this person? Because you really want to just see, do I have chemistry? Do I have compatibility? And get to that second date because people are much more relaxed on a second date than they are on a first date. And then you can get a true read. Okay, I really do like this person. So, you know, get, you know, ask great questions of the person and get to know them so that you can see their personality a little bit do I like them you know do they have a you know a spark or anything together and try to go on the second date but no politics no dating no exes um I'd say you know no no religion none of it you know okay but <laughs> what about what if what advice could you give them if the date is talking about those things how do you change the subject without being awkward or weird like how would you suggest they change the topic so I say touch and go is what I say, um, or question answer the question a lot, you know, so because there will be people that don't take my advice and still, you know, go rogue on, right. you know, obviously. Um, and, you know, and they'll ask a question and I always say, you know, be honest and answer the question, but just touch upon it. You don't have to say, so I was married for this long and this is what happened. And this, you know, yeah, you know, we were married and now we're divorced and, you know, um, we grew apart and, you know, so tell me more about yourself, ask something back or, you know, um, I know that you said that, you know, you like to travel, where are some places you've been always, you know, answer it, but move on to another topic of some sort, because otherwise what's going to happen is, is this innocent answer is going to lead you guys to sitting there talking about something you don't, neither one of you care about. Nobody cares about your ex. Right. So yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Just uh, answer it and then move on. And also let them know that, hey, I didn't come on this date to talk about our exes. I want to learn about you. I want to know yes, more about absolutely. you. And even like make a joke or make it fun or something like that. But yeah, I agree. Like nothing good will come about talking about your exes because you can start talking about how negative, how bad he was. And then your date's going to be like, oh my gosh, you're not over him. Like you're still talking yeah. about him very negatively. Or you say, oh my gosh, my ex-husband was great. He was great with the kids, great with the dogs, had a great job. He was hot. And then your date's like, wait, what? Like, why are you talking about this person in this way? Like you're not over him. So it's like all these ways are bad ways of answering. I mean, the best way is just to say that, gosh, we you know, we had a great marriage. It was, we had great kids. It just didn't work out and we're both moving on. And, but I want to talk about you. Like what's, what makes you tick, you know, like just switch the subject and hopefully your date will get the hint and not um, bring it back. So yeah, I agree. A lot of clients just, they get in this hole about talking about dating, talking about matchmaking and nothing good comes out of it. Like you're not learning about each other, you know? It's just all the negative. I couldn't agree more. We literally, just yesterday I was talking to a client and he was asking me and he's like, well, but she was asking me the questions. I'm like, I, I understand that she, but you've got to get off of it. Yeah. And doesn't, you know, you just hit, you know, 50% of marriages end in divorce. Everybody's divorced. It's okay. There's right. nothing wrong with it. And it, the, the story doesn't matter. That doesn't define who you are. What defines who you are is, is that you're here to meet somebody and move forward. So, you know, we're divorced and it's, 
you know, I have two beautiful children and I'm here to meet somebody wonderful. So tell me more about yourself. Exactly. So you mentioned earlier about uh, setting up, like, do you, how would you advise a good friend of yours if they don't want to use matchmaking or they don't want to use online dating, but they want to meet friends of friends, how would you suggest that person go about hitting up their friends to meet a potential romantic partner? Well, I would probably tell, so if it was one of my close friends, I would tell them to use, at the very least, to use online then, because I think you need to be out there. And I think you need to get the energy out there to the universe that you want to meet that right person. And so, you know, you want to let all of your friends know, hey, you guys, I'm ready to meet somebody. I'm on the market. And, you know, if you know somebody, let me know and tell your friends and everything. But that's not enough because what ends up happening a lot of times with that is that, you know, you only know so many, most people in general only know so many single people. And so that then they decide, well, okay, she's single, he's single. I'm going to fix them up. Um, but they don't realize like they don't, there's nothing about them. That's really a great match. So I, um, I advise that, you know, yes, you use every avenue resource you can, but also, you know, you still want to do online. You still want to hire a matchmaker. You still want to, you know, get yourself out there and be in the game because otherwise, How's he going to find you or she going to find you? Right, right. Yeah. One way that I encourage my single friends is try to reach out to all matchmaking companies and see if you could be in their database and get set up for free. You never know. I mean, it only takes one match to find Mr. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, uh, online dating is such a great place to meet people. And there, I feel like the stigma is gone completely. Like it's almost fine that you meet someone online and there's nothing embarrassing about it like i remember 15 years ago it was kind of still embarrassing 20 years ago you would just yeah. keep the online oh. thing on the dl you don't even go around telling people you met someone online so yeah i still have it now so 25 years i've been doing this and i have been to weddings i and people still don't say that they met through me yeah. um and I'm like, everybody knows what's going on. You know, right. I'm your friend to fix you up with somebody. It's okay. But um, so at the end of the day, and yeah, it's very good advice to tell people, you know, to, you know, call a matchmaker, see if they can be in their candidate pool. Um, the only difference is, is that sometimes that it, that's just one more feather in the cap to do. I just think you should do everything to find that. When you're ready to meet somebody, you probably should have done something six months to a year sooner than that, because it doesn't happen overnight, you know? So I would suggest doing every avenue until you meet the right person. Well, the but thing is, holidays are coming up. So there's holiday parties and hopefully the single women and men out there accept every invitation to go. Like you just never know. Absolutely. So and hopefully you meet somebody during the holidays because Valentine's is coming up in February. <laughs> so it's like all these opportunities to meet people. But I feel like during the holidays, people are especially nice, even if you go shopping and there's tons of people out there. But there's something about, you know, the holidays, <laughs> the air, and uh, people are just nicer. Like someone might grab a shopping cart for you. Someone might grab this for you at the grocery store. And it's like all these opportunities for people to get off their phones and to say hi to people and smile. And it's, you know, free to be nice, but yet so many people aren't even nice nowadays. Like when you go out and about. So I just feel people right now need to start thinking about that. And um, when people invite you to holiday parties or, you know, a friend that has a work party or um, whatever it is, go. Don't be like, I'm tired tonight that, you know, I ate too much last night. Go. Yeah. Because those that's the best place to meet somebody too is at these holiday parties because people bring friends and then, and people are in more of a festive mood. They're kinder, they're nicer. It's a better opportunity as yeah. far as that goes. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, with that, I will uh, thank you so much, Jill, for speaking with me. I love chatting with you. I love talking to matchmakers. I feel like there's so much information for us to get out to the single people. And it's just, I love 
just chatting. So thank you so much for uh, joining me. And I know I have all of your information for people that want to be in touch with you. You are like the matchmaker to find in Boston. So hopefully people know that. And I will put all your information in the show notes. And yeah, do you have any one last tip for anybody? Well, I just want to say, I think you're fabulous too. And if you were single, you should definitely also be reaching out to May because she knows her stuff and she is fantastic. And I can't say good enough about you. I really am impressed with you and you do a phenomenal job. So, you know, either give me a call or give me a call, Jill at lunch dates, but either way, you know what? Call a matchmaker, get yourself involved and do something because we'll introduce you to somebody fantastic. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Jill. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye.